We're at it again. Hi. Along with half a million people in the UK every summer, we're, we're back, back motorhoming. Woo! Living on the open road. <laughs> oh, there was a noise oh, back there, jump. definitely. Appreciating nature's beauty. <gasps> oh, isn't that amazing? And joining a community of devoted motorhomers. Could we be super nosy and have a little look? Absolutely, yeah, sure. yes. Oh, this is magical. Look at this. On me head, son, on me head. With me, Paul Merton. <laughs> and me, Suki Webster. <laughs> have you finished your coffee? Have I done what? Have you finished your coffee? So jump aboard for some more great British adventures. I've got a surprise for you. Mm. Boom! <laughs> Mastering new oh. skills. All right, come back. All right. <laughs> Collecting tip-top tips from kings and queens of the road. Velcro strip on the back, sticks to your wall. You're never going to lose it. And inspecting all the latest gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into gear. Oh, it's not doing anything, hang on. For another great motorhoming adventure. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, I could see a bit more of it if you didn't have your head in the way. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> For this leg of our fun-packed motorhoming journey, we've headed west to Wales, to the beautiful National Park of Snowdonia. And while we're still parked up, it's good to do a quick check of the motorhome to make sure everything is in good shape before we take to the road for our next adventure. I notice this list is headed pre-flight checklist. If we're flying, my driving is definitely not on the right track. First on the list is check the motorhome's windows and roof lights are closed. Right, let's do it. Do you know how the windows work? Yes. OK. Check internal doors and cupboards are closed. That's yeah. going to be difficult for me to drive from here. Can you not put your arms out the window? There we are. I've got to turn off the gas and then check on the fridge that it has been turned off. I've got the keys. Turning off the gas. Well check, done. double check. Check, double check. Turn the power off. OK. Tick. Lots of tea towels are very useful in motor, mm, aren't they? Absolutely. Shall we wrap it in this to put it away? And we'll wedge it all in with the kitchen roll. Check the area for anything left behind. Well, I've got you. The most important thing not to leave behind. Oh, that's very kind of you. Yeah. So we're done. Pre-flight checks complete. Now that everything in the motorhome is taken care of, it's time to take in this wonderful part of Wales. And what a trip we have planned. We'll start at Lake Bala, try our hand at paddle boarding, and then we'll be parked up there for the night. Then we'll take in the beautiful views of Cader Idris, which is the highest mountain in South Snowdonia, before traveling through Dolgathlai to indulge in a spot of painting. And as we slowly pull away, it's clear we're entering some magnificent scenery. Have a look at that ahead of you there. Wow, that is stunning. Beautiful landscape. Well, you'll have a better view because you're being the passenger today, which is about time, some people say. I say. Along with the glorious views, there are some familiar challenges. This is a sort of bit of a test of the driving because the roads are wide enough on each side for one vehicle, but there are so many twists and turns that you can't really relax too much because you don't know who's coming towards you around the corner. Yes, and we're a particularly wide vehicle compared yeah. to most. Yes. Snowdonia, or Erreri, in its native Welsh, is the biggest national park in Wales and the fourth largest in the UK covering a vast 823 square miles. It's home to the highest mountain in England and Wales, Mount Snowdon. I'm always amazed at how big these national parks are. Yeah, well, how big do you think they are? Like a pocket handkerchief? Well, I thought from London to Scotland was about 800 miles. Yes, but 800 square miles, that is a different measurement, but we're now 
wandering into the world of mathematics. Let's not wander. No, I wouldn't go there. It's, no, uh, we'd never come out again. No, it'd only so be lost. trouble. Snowdonia's dramatic scenery with craggy summits and crystal clear lakes attracts around 4 million visitors a year. And there are plenty of campsites that cater for us motorhomers. OK, yeah. more facts. More facts. The unique landscape of Snowdonia is largely down to glacial movement in the last arse age. The arse age? Yes. <laughs> I'll read that again. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> The unique landscape of Snowdonia is largely down to the glacial movement in the last ice age. What well, around... happened to the ice age? When was that? Oh, that was just after the ice age. Was it? Because when the ice melted, there yeah. were lots of arses that had been stuck in the ice. And so, therefore, they called the next age the arse age. That's so right. Mammoth arses, dinosaur arses. Oh, it was full of arses, mate. This is not the only thing that's full of arses. Shall I go from the top? Yeah. The unique landscape of Snowdonia is largely down to glacial movement in the last ice age. Around 18,000 years ago, the movement of the glaciers created the U-shaped valleys so clearly visible in Snowdonia today. 58% of the population of Snowdonia can speak Welsh, making it far higher than the national average of 29.1%. That is a lot. This landscape we're passing through has inspired within me deep poetic thoughts. There once was a girl called Sally who lived in the Rhonda Valley. Then with a sniff she moved to Cardiff, <laughs> where with people she became very pally. <laughs> yeah, how about that? But let's leave the limericks to one side, as now I really need to concentrate on the driving. It's quite vertiginous here, isn't it? Well, you keep your eyes yeah, on the Yeah, not road. only that, but it's high up and all. I don't like this at all. No. Even Naomi Campbell hasn't worn heels that high. Yeah, exactly. I hope this doesn't go on for long. I'm not enjoying this. Oh, dear. This is not good. You've never liked heights. The word plummet keeps coming into my head. <laughs> Luckily for me, the steep, windy road soon levels off. Pooh! It's good now oh. that you can see what's off the side of the road rather than nothing. Yes. No, that was a bit scary. With a sense of calm returning to our journey, I too am inspired to wax lyrical. There was a young man called Tom Jones. Yeah. And singing lay deep in his bones. You'd have to go far here to hear such an aria. <laughs> <laughs> he hit such beautiful tones. There we are. That's great. <laughs> That's the best one yet. Snowdonia is a great place to visit for active pursuits, such as caving, climbing and water sports. And for the latter, there is no better place than Lake Bala, or Llyn Tegid, as it's known in Welsh, which sits to the east of Mount Snowdon. It is a popular place for sailing, windsurfing, kayaking, canoeing and paddleboarding. Oh, we could maybe have a go at one of those. Paddleboarding? Is that like a big surfboard that you just... What exactly do you do? Just sit on it? You stand on it and paddle along. Right. I've always wanted to have a go at that, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I'm uh, happy to try things. Ah, there's the lake. Look. Oh, yes, beautiful That's lake. That's a very impressive lake. Oh! Oh, look! How oh, wonderful. Narrow gauge railway. Yes. Will any children wave at me? Hello! Hello, hello, big children wave. <laughs> Wales is home to some of the most famous narrow gauge railways in the world. The Talasin Railway in Snowdonia is famously where the Reverend W. Audrey, creator of Thomas the Tank Engine, was inspired to write some of his stories. In 1952, he was working on the steam train as a volunteer guard. He signalled the driver to leave, but accidentally left the refreshment lady at the station. This was the first of his personal experiences from the railway to be retold in his famous children's books. The train next to us is running along a single track and therefore will never suffer the problem that I'm about to encounter. You're always happy to wave at people when you're on something where you, there's no danger that you're going to have to communicate, you know, a proper... Now, am I going to get through there, do you think? I don't 
think so. When motorhome meets motorhome, when you meet a normal-sized car, they generally sort of, like, make room for you, but when motorhomes are involved, they have to decide. Yes. There might be room for them there, do you think? Somebody's out directing them. They seem to which, be going which back. They, which they are reversing. Well, that's very, very kind of them. I shall thank them. Yeah. That is very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, and that was not an easy manoeuvre no. for them. Still didn't hit anything. No, well done. and motorhoming through the idyllic Snowdonia National Park. Every time you turn a corner, you'll see a different vista, which is yes. uh, awe-inspiring, really. Yeah. And we're on our way to the campsite for the night at the largest natural lake in Wales, Lake Bala. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful, yes. isn't it? Yes. Glorious. Also known as the Lake of Beauty, the lake is said to be home to a mythical monster called Teggy. Speculation that Teggy is related to the Loch Ness monster is impossible to prove, as neither of them ever return your calls or include you in their WhatsApp group. It's quite tight as well. Welcome. Ah, oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Carissa to Pantheron and Campsite. Thank you. How was your journey here? Lovely. Good. Yeah. Yes, very good. Thank you. So okay. now I'll grab a bike and I'll get you pitched up. Oh, okay. Terrific. A bike. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. She seems to be heading straight for the lake. <laughs> Hopefully she'll stop before then. Yes. Oh, beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? Isn't it just? Okay, so I can't see where she is. Yeah, I can see her now, yeah, OK. Looks good to me. She's still saying, come on, stop. OK. Great. Thank you so much. Before we settle in, our host, Catherine, offers up some local knowledge. I'll teach you some Welsh phrases. So, pranda means good afternoon. Pranda. And is da day? Da, da means good. Good. Oh, OK. So, good afternoon. So, bori da, da is the good. Yaki yes. da, da is the good. There we go. Yeah. So, welcome, and this is your pitch for the evening. OK, lovely. And Thank you. in front of you, you've got Llyntegid, Wales' largest natural lake, and it is five miles long. It is home to one of the rare fish, um, which is called the Gwynedd. Felly, enjoy eich gweddill eich dyrnod, and that means enjoy the rest of your day. OK, and thank you so much. have a wonderful stay with us. I'm sure we will. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for your help. Great. As one of the most scenic campsites in North Wales, this secluded lakeshore setting overlooked by Mount Arran and Eranig is a lovely place to stay. Oh, I can't wait to get messing about in the water. But before we do that, we've spotted a rather interesting looking horse box. Well, it's nice to see that even the horses go on holiday. <laughs> They probably deserve it, you know, pulling a cart all year. Yeah. Think to yourself, yeah, I want to, you know, get me hooves in the lake. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Just admiring your horse box. It's <laughs> gorgeous. This is Bertha. 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 That's a good name. Fantastic name. I'm Paul. This is Suki. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Kieran. Hi, Kieran. How are you Hi, doing? Kieran. This is Kat. Hello. Hello. So, uh, how long have you had Bertha? Probably about eight years. Right. Uh huh. On the road, about five. How did you um... find a horse box to make into a home? Being stored in a barn on a farm because there was quite a few holes where the rot had got in and bits mm -hmm. of wood missing and there were mushrooms growing out of the walls and things. And so then we spent the it. first probably two years just sanding the outside, didn't we? What wood is that made of? I was told it was Iroka, which is a, some sort of tropical hardwood. Uh -huh. um, you know, it was built for horses in 1984, so we had to clean all the straw and muck out. How many horses would this have carried? So Three shire horses, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I see you've got a circus ticket office sign. <laughs> you are a travelling circus, are you? No, not quite. We dabble. Can we have a look inside? Uh, yeah. yeah, you're welcome Probably to. Probably best going up the side steps. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to go first? Go sure. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, this is magical. Look at this. 
I also love all the wood. Yes. This is beautiful. There's three of you up there. The kids are up here, yeah. Right. You've got a kind of king size bed frame. Yes. So, yeah, the two girls go there and our youngest oh, so is up on this one. Do, do, do As he one, grows, two, we'll have three. to make some sort of pull out extension. Do they love sleeping yes. in here? They love it. Do they? Yeah. And they've yeah, decorated well. some of the stuff down here as yeah, well. Yeah, some of the artwork is theirs. That's beautiful. Do you want to come yeah, in here? Yeah, come and join us. Yeah. And I see you've got a little sort of uh, hook on the door there. Is that to stop it opening when you're moving along? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. This, this, well, that one there is for hanging bananas, but this one... <laughs> there we go, that yeah, just yeah. stops anything falling out. Oh, I see, to yeah. To stop everything yeah. coming forward. But as we travelled, that's up as a sofa bed. Yeah. It's got yeah. some storage underneath, some wooden boxes that slide out like drawers. Yeah, it's everywhere you look, there's something lovely to look at. <laughs> yeah, there really is. You know, I love our motorhome. They're great fun and very, very functional. Mm. But it doesn't have personality like this. No, no, this is real character. Well, and the lorry itself, what I fell in love with, was the, the cab shape and everything. Uh -huh. It's, you know, the yes. classic 60s, 70s yeah. model Bedford. It was just like a toy one that I had as a kid, so... <laughs> so you loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for, for allowing us to come in and have a look. It's beautiful. Oh, thank it you. It really is stunning. And if you ever come across a lame horse that needs to be taken to the vet, you, you can well, just get it. it in. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the joys of motorhoming is finding campsites like this, where you pitch up and then have a whole host of activities right outside your home from home. And the calm lake looks perfect for us to try some paddle boarding. I feel like a sausage. Skinless. <laughs> no, very much with the thick skin. Oh, I see. This is a winter one as well. You're worried about water being cold? Yes, I am. This is my paddle board, not a giant flip-flop. Cool, blimey. It's not as light as it looks. And we're meeting instructor Vito for a few tips. So I'd suggest just starting off Kneeling. on your knees like so. Uh -huh. Yes. And you can sort of paddle around, you can try it out like this, and then when you feel brave, feel free to stand up. And any instructions on how to stand? One thing that helps quite a bit is you can put the paddle in front of you like this, and then you can just pop up onto one leg on the other and you can use the paddle. I can yeah. see the danger between kneeling down and standing up. Yeah, that's going to be the fun bit. I can see, I can see the intermediary bit. stage there, which is kneeling down, yeah. falling in, getting up. That's quite often the, uh, the it, way it goes. goes. <laughs> right. If you come off and the board flips over, they're very easy to just flip back the right way round. OK, so I can kneel on this at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah, Paul. Thank you very much. What's the opposite of stable? <laughs> oh, dear you, me. You, an emotional mess. This is rocking quite a bit. It is. Maybe if you drop a little bit lower. There we go. <laughs> right. Should I be brave yet or not yet? You can brave it now. I'll let you stand up first. Am I in the right place or do I need to come forward? Maybe just a touch forward, but you can probably walk forward once you're up. There we go. Like a yoga class. Woohoo! I'm up on my feet. Oh. Yeah. Are you up, my angel? A bit yeah, less up, stable good. than I was expecting. Once no, you relax into right. it, it's not so bad. Do it's I need to stiff, still be so. forward or am I good here? I think you're perfect. Vito just said I'm perfect. You are in every way. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Suki, I'm not well balanced, either emotionally or on a paddleboard. But I'm getting there. This is great fun. I can't think well I've had so much enjoyment. There's something really nice about floating on a giant piece of plastic. Woohoo! Suki's off. I've taught her everything I know. Yeah, no, she's very good. Majestic is the word. I'm coming back to find you. I'm over here. They could have made a little sort of gin and tonic holder or something for you. Yes. Woo! You know, you're having fun, so that's 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 yeah, the most like important it. thing. Beautiful. Come on. That's it, come on. Doesn't seem to be following me. Am I still attached to you? Yes, I, here we are. Come on. We've had our fun. Although I enjoyed the paddle boarding, I could tell Paul felt about as comfortable and elegant as a swan riding a bike, uphill in a stiff breeze without a proper saddle but he's about to have a great idea. And you've come as a superhero. Yes, I have. What's my superpower? Staying cold in the warmest climate. <laughs> yes. 
As it's such a beautiful day, I thought we should go for a swim. I agree. Yeah. It looks inviting. Right. Really? Wish me luck. Good luck. How's that? Oh, it's lovely. Is it all right? Are you getting in? Well, I, I am in. Well, you're only in up to a certain point, though. I know. I suppose I should sort of, like, sink down a little bit and uh, get the full experience. I'm going to swim around you. Oh. Oh! No. Well done. Oh, no. Too calm? No, I'm up to my neck. I'm getting used to it now. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. And spin around and stern. Oh, for God's sake, woman. Consideration. I do a synchronised swim. You do a movement. Bring your feet up in front of you, do a movement, and I'll try and follow. Why don't you do synchronised swimming on your own? You'll be in perfect timing then. Because I like doing things with you. Okay, you really right, okay synchronised swimming, right? You ready? Yeah. Okay, we'll, if we face each other, that'll yeah. be easy, okay. wouldn't it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, that's synchronised, isn't it? <laughs> Great toilet. <laughs> Water sports are great, but if you're not prepared, getting things dry afterwards on a motorhome can be difficult. One of the gadgets we've put in here is a washing line, because when you're off grid, you have to park up, you can't camp out, you can't have anything on the periphery of the van, so we put a line up here. So we used to always have these sort of towels, as you would in a camper van, but they just get smelly so quickly and they take up a lot of room. Then we thought, these, cheap as chips, and when we do a lot of wild swimming, so you can easily put them in your bag, just take them with you, they're lightweight, then we'll just dry them on the front of the van, they dry within half an hour and obviously take up a lot less room in the van. You could have about five of these for the same bulk as one of those. OK, so this is our bathroom. This is a fully sealed wet room, and we've got floor liner on the sides. We have this squeegee, which we absolutely love to use because we use the shower room as our closet, also a shower and our bathroom. We need to ensure that it's dry once we put everything back in, so we use this to wipe down the walls of any excess water to make sure that it's kept nice and clean. Back at Lake Bala, after our hugely successful synchronised swimming, it's time to hop in the shower to warm up. Only a rose I sing to you. <laughs> and having warmed up, we continue to enjoy the view with a hot cuppa. I really enjoyed that. The water was a little bit cold, but when you get out, you sort of really glow, you know, because yes. cold water's meant to be good for you. Although the paddle boarding wasn't really for me, I really enjoy the swim just now. Because mm. it would be silly to sort of come all this way, come here, be 10 yards away from it and not go in. Those ducks are going quite slowly, aren't they? Mm. I suppose a quick duck's out of the question. <laughs> this is lovely. I agree. We've spent the night in Snowdonia National Park on the shores of the beautiful Lake Bala. And after a good night's sleep, we need to check essentials. Do you want to check hair and makeup? Gorgeous. How am I? Oh. <laughs> you can brush your hair, though, so that you don't look like Bobo the Clown. Don't do it as Hitler. I'm not doing what it is Hitler. Honestly, there's, there are very few people these days who think that's a good hair look. Having shaped my follicles into an acceptable style, it's time to get going. Well, this has been one of my favourite campsites so far. When you're driving down a narrow lane, it's always a test of the morale to see a sign that suggests that the road's going to get narrower. Yes, and we're on a little humpback bridge. So it's enough room to get over. Well done. Yeah, you wouldn't want to take that at speed in this. No. Safely over the bridge, and we can set about our plan for the day. Firstly, we're heading to Kadir Idris and the Mach Loop Valleys. Then via Dolgechlai, we're driving to Brinny Gwyn 
where we'll camp for the night, become artists for a few hours, and treat ourselves to the motorhome equivalent of a drive-in movie. So when you think of Wales, what do you think of? Thanks, boys. A strong rugby playing tradition. I think of male voice choirs, Welsh cakes, Welsh lamb, leeks, oi, 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 oi. My professional career started at the Swansea Fringe Festival. That's one of the first things I think about when I think about Wales. Yes. I remember one night we had 17 people come in and we thought, 17? <laughs> yes. This is great. Playing much smaller audiences is harder. It is, but it's a good way to build your confidence in yes. a way because you're not overwhelmed by a large crowd. And did you stay with a local? Uh, we stayed in a caravan which was miles away. We were sort of seen as enthusiastic <laughs> beginners, so people would give us a lift home, you know, back to the caravan. That's uh... nice. Some 40 years on, and I'm having a holiday in a motorhome. So we are off. So a viewing spot. Yes. With spectacular views. Views of the mighty Kader Idris mountain. Kader Idris is 893 metres tall. Ah. The name Kader Idris means chair of Idris. <laughs> <laughs> and is generally thought to refer to a legendary giant warrior poet. Ah, oh, I bet he did good limericks. There was a giant from Kader whose head was stuck in the air. <laughs> His feet at the bottom smelled something rotten. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so far away, he didn't care. Yes! How about that? Good put, one. Put that in your book of anthology. This is the Kader Idris Visitor Centre. Sadly, our motorhome isn't made to scale mountains, but there's plenty that are. A number of off-road vehicles have been converted into motorhomes, meaning you can not only tackle the mountainous terrain, but have the facilities on board to stay up there. The Land Rover Defender Campervan is just one example of the 4x4 motorhomes on the market. We have found a much gentler landscape, a lovely shady spot where we can sit back and admire the majestic peak of Kader Idris. There we are. Which way do you want to face? That way? Well, I was thinking we'd face the valley view. This is rather lovely, isn't it? Isn't it? Beautiful. Oh. Look at that lovely bridge. Yes, and you're going to hear a waterfall in the distance. I wonder if it's got a troll underneath it. I don't mean like an internet troll. You know, like a troll troll. The ones you used to put on your pencil at school. Do you have that? Oh, what? You mean sort of little plastic dolls with orange hair? If you stuck me on a giant pencil, my hair would go orange. It's worth giving it a go, isn't it? <laughs> and I'd have that... like this. It's times like these I wish I'd brought a pencil with me. Anyway, snack time. Little Welsh cakes. Oh, I think it's a bit too hot for Welsh cakes for me, I think. See, so, yeah, they're yours, you can have those. Thank you. Mmm, refreshing, mmm. Are they particularly Welsh, Welsh cakes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called Welsh cakes, would they? They don't call them Scandinavian cakes. That's my cake gone. That's that troll is going to come out from that bridge. Yeah, I look forward to it. There may not be trolls, but there is something equally noisy and disruptive. Because RAF Valley on Anglesey trained their pilots to fly as low as just 76 metres above ground level through the Makloop Valleys of Snowdonia. Home to the number four flying training school, it's responsible for training the UK's next generation of world-class fighter pilots. And due to the rugged terrain here, aircrew are also trained for mountain operations, and it's home to the Mountain Rescue Service, the military's only all-weather search and rescue team. And as if on cue... You hear that? Yeah. It's coming from over there. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's getting la louder. Look, look, Whoa. there we are. There we go. There's one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty low, isn't it? Yeah. Another rumble, another rumble. Second one, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, he's following the first one. The first one obviously knows the way. <laughs> oh, wow. After that spectacular Top Gun moment, 
The Peace Returns. Having just witnessed a very fast mode of transport, it's with a sense of familiar comfort that we once again enjoy a more sedate option. I know I'm clunky in the cat's eyes, but I don't want my wing mirror to be hit on that wall. No, I think you're very wise. I am very wise, and here's a piece of wisdom. People in glass houses should always wear clothes. And talking about what you can see through glass... White dots, sheep dotted on the hillside. The beautiful heather. Yes. Amongst the bracken. Beautiful colours. It's yes. interesting how quickly the landscape changes. Much flatter here, isn't it? I mean, more mountains ahead, but... Yes. We're not far away from our next campsite. Mm-hmm. Which is very quiet, very secluded, and it's run by an artist. Oh, really? Ooh. Lovely. One of the joys of motorhoming is slowing down in beautiful remote locations. But if you want to stay connected to the outside world, you will need to power up your devices. Our motorhome experts have been testing some of the top gadgets on the market to see what is best at keeping you powered up. Up first is the budget running snail. It's a wind-up solar radio, light, and USB charger. Keep it in there. So it's a minute's winding for an hour's charge. And good for a workout. Is it charging? It is charging. Where's the flashlight button here? Yeah. Torch is bright. Yeah, it's bright. Yeah, it's really bright. So it's easy to carry, and there you've got a source. I think something like this is like kind of a must-have for van life because yeah. it's great in an emergency. Scores out of ten. So I'm going nine. OK, I'll give it a 9, too. I mean, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for its utility. Probably an 8 out of 10. I'm going to probably give that an 8. Yeah. I quite like it. I'd say 8 out of 10. Yeah. Next is the Goal Zero Venture Jump. And this is the jump starter and the battery. Because once it's fully charged, you can use it to actually jump start your motorhome. And apparently, three hours charge, and then it lasts up to six months. That's so you could good. keep that in your van if you were parked up for a few days have that and you wouldn't have to worry about any non-starting. Having something that's really compact, mobile, it's great. I'm tempted to say 10. What about you? No, I never give things 10. A well. 9. Yeah, I'd definitely would give it, like, a 9. Out. I was going to say a 9 out of 10, too. I'd give that 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, I'll agree. Yeah. 9. And lastly in our survey, the BioLite Camp Stove. OK, so this charges things from the fire. I've never seen anything like that before. It's a campfire, but it's also an energy source. It's quite easy to light. And then you can turn the fan on, and, and so the fan helps to make it like a much bigger flame. And it gets so hot. So I think you can like boil a kettle. Is your phone right. charging? Oh, it is. Well, with it? Yeah. That's quite impressive. The power pack attached also stores power so it can charge other gadgets when you're off grid. Oh, yes. Yeah. See? That's clever. It is practical because it's quite small, so it's nice and easy to pack. The only down point, really, is once you've lit it, you've got to wait for it to cool down before you can go anywhere. That so is, you're not going to use it just part. to charge your phone. Wherever you're going to use it, you're going to want to be for at least, I don't know, three hours, I guess. It's a good concept. I just think there's easier ways of charging your mobile. I'd have to give it three. I can't give it three. Six. I'm going to give it probably a seven. I'm going to give it an eight and a half. I mean, I think I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I give it 11 out of 10. For a gadget, coolness. That's quite cool. We're taking our motor home around Snowdonia, and along with beautiful hills and valleys, there are also lovely towns, like this one, Dolgethai. The town was the centre of a minor gold rush in the 19th century. When it says minor gold rush, I think it's referring to it being small rather than the people who were looking for the gold. This is so pretty. Oh, yes. Isn't it a gorgeous town? The last gold mine in Wales closed in 1998, making Welsh gold 30 times more valuable than standard gold. It is considered the most valuable in the world. Oh, this is quite a steep hill. Isn't it just? Letting you turn in, I think. Thank you. Ooh, 
This is very uh, nice and shady. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Always makes me think of folklore, this kind of woodland. Fairyland. Yes. Dingley Dell. Looks like we're coming into it. Uh, yeah. This looks nice, doesn't it? Beautiful. Hello, I'm Ian, the owner. Oh, hi, Ian. Hi, hello. Are you the artist? I am indeed. Hello, I'm Suki. This is Paul. Hi there. Please hello, how are you doing? I've got you booked in. Not the next one down from this caravan, the next one beyond that. So got you. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you very much. So, this one in here, is it? Yes. That looks well good, done. doesn't it? Should yeah. we go for an explore? Mm, I think so. The name of the campsite, Brinny Gwyn, means somewhere pleasant on the hill. Oh, look at that. <gasps> oh, isn't that spectacular? Artist Ian runs a gallery here, and we're eager to see his work. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Come in. Oh, wow. oh, what a lovely room. Are those feathers, Ian? They are indeed. Wow. I paint directly onto swan flight feathers. Wow. What gave you the idea to paint on swan feathers? Well, it was a, a trip to New Zealand, and uh, whilst I was over there, I saw how the Maoris had used coloured feathers on their ceremonial dress. Yeah, yeah. I came up with the idea that if you can colour a feather, you can also paint on a feather. Mm. And I had a, a swan's feather in a vase as an ornament, and I pulled it out and decided to give it a go. And, and uh, do you store so... the feathers throughout the year? Do you keep them in a yes. fridge or something? No, you don't need to keep them in a fridge. Right. Funnily enough, swans them. don't live in a fridge. Do you know what I mean? So if they had to be in a fridge, we wouldn't see them out and about. My wife's a very difficult woman. You get used to her as the years go by. <laughs> Should we have a walk around and have a look? Yeah. Please feel free. Swans naturally shed their feathers annually. It gives them something to do in the summer. A nearby nature reserve collects the feathers for Ian. And it's by using triple zero tiny brushes that he's able to add such an exquisite level of detail to his paintings. Look at this one here. Oh, wow. It took me a while to spot the bar now. This might be my favourite so far. Beautiful. It is, isn't it? That is very yeah, good. yeah. Super talented Ian is also keen to share his craft with aspiring artists. When I have students, obviously, you don't want to make it too difficult. Yes. Well, I set the scene and then I give them a project to fill in and to paint. So at the moment, I'm just working on this. Ian, would we have a go? Well, well, you have a go rather than me have a go. I, I, actually, I, no. Yeah, you no. don't get out of it that easy. Well, you, <laughs> I said I've got, I've got more than one student, and oh, okay. I've got more than one feather ready. So. Oh, okay. Okay, All so right, well. you can both have a go. Brilliant. Yeah. I need to get my reading glasses because this. You is are so definitely, delicate. definitely. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I need to pick up my artistic ability as well because I seem to have left it somewhere at school. Ian invites us outside and offers to teach us how to do this intricate artwork. To help us, he started the paintings off. Okay. If you want, I'll just demonstrate a little yes, area. Please. Yeah. And if we start with the black, so we can work just up to the edge. Oh, that is so delicate. Well, the great thing with acrylic is you can paint over it. So if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's making me... I don't even know if I can do it that steady as that. I mean, Are that you is... going squiggly already? Just, oh, yeah, just, mate, I'm you're... making me go squiggly. If you just rest your hand against it, cos this is dry, so it yes. gives you a certain amount of stability. And I suppose it's also about, in a, in a strange way, sort of like just controlling your breathing and your heart rate and just making sure you're calm about what you're doing. If you're feeling nervous about it, you're more likely to make a mistake. Did you want to have and, a, have a yes, go? Yes, I'll have a go. OK, I've gone over the line there. Rather than using the side of the brush, try to use more the point of the brush. Yes, that's where I was going wrong. Yeah. And Suhi has done a little bit of painting herself in the last year or so. I can tell. She's got the brush technique up quite good. Yes. Do you know, I haven't painted for so many years and I've picked up a brush and I haven't lost what I had before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could, yeah, that's good. Listen, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm under no that's, illusions. It's better than I thought you might yeah. Well, yeah, but it's rough, isn't it? Whereas what you're doing there is very... Yeah, no, it's, it's very good. And obviously we're just doing the butterfly, but to do the whole thing, Ian, how long would that be? Well, normally on a, a single feather, it takes me about a week. Mm. Sometimes I have to step away from the painting and go and have a cup of tea 
and then come back to it half an hour later and straight away I'll know what it needs. Right, yeah. yes, yeah. that's similar to writing, actually. It's almost like you're sort of collaborating with yourself, a version of yourself, you yeah. know, the version that wrote it originally and the version that looks at it a few days later. I mean, we're talking about how creativity can feel like it's come from outside you, but I can look at this and see it's definitely come from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's coming on really well, that is. I mean, some people have the ability and some people don't. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You can tell I'm keen now. I mean, you imagine now doubling this up and having the same amount of detail you put on this side. On the other side. And you would have a really good butterfly oh, painting you. that you could be proud of. Mm. Yeah. Paul? Yes. 10 um, out of 10 for effort. <laughs> 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 but no, that is great. I mean, that is wonderful. It well, is. Well, thank you so much. No, it's thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank Cheerio. you. I really enjoyed that. Yes, I can see you. Well, you have a real gift for it. And, uh, oh, thank you. Well, I really learned something about myself. Uh-huh. And what I've learned is that, fundamentally, I'm absolutely useless at everything. <laughs> Just the last two activities. Yeah, the last two activities. But there's an activity I can do. Watching a Charlie Chaplin film while sitting down. Right, here we here go. we go. What's it called, this one? The Rink. We just need a mini projector and a sheet, and the motorhome makes for the perfect screen. He's so balletic, isn't he? This is one of my favourite jokes coming up. Once he starts mixing the cocktail. Egg. Well, raw egg cocktail. Yeah. See, though, to make the cocktail smell better, he puts a flower in it. Uh -huh. And then where <laughs> he's moving, the cocktail shape yeah. is completely still. <laughs> <laughs> you can admire the artistry of it. I love that cheeky grin he does when he knows he's done something wrong. Yeah. So charming. This is some kind of heaven, our own outdoor cinema. We couldn't have done this without our motorhome. Cheers. Cheers, my darling. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> what a great end to the day, watching one of my comedy heroes. <laughs> Lights out. Mm. Good night. Good night, love. Oh. I can't do anything right. I can't do paddle board and I can't paint. I can't do anything right. Oh, no, there's lots you can do right. Oh, God. Braving hordes of hungry macaques, Nick Knowles boards a jungle train on an amazing railway adventure in Malaysia, brand new tomorrow at nine. Spring has sprung and lambing season has well and truly begun. Meet the fluffy newborn residents of the Isle of Wight, Jewel of the South, brand new next.